Welcome to Oodlewai, everybody. Welcome to the barbecue capital of Appalachia. My name is Steve Ray, and I am coming to you from Snow Hill at the very foot of White Oak Mountain in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. To the north of me, in Sevierville, Tennessee, Dolly Parton was born. And to the south of me, just over the state line in Ringgold, Georgia, George Jones and Tammy Wynette were married. Welcome to the South, y'all. Down here, it's all about the barbecue. It's what matters. Glad to have you tonight. This is Steve Ray. I'm sitting in for Greg Rempe, who is on assignment. And he'll be back next week. You won't want to miss that show. It'll be a big show. So don't miss it. But stay with us tonight. we got a great show lined up for you. It's extensive. I'm going to tell you right now, it's extensive. Let me tell you all about it. First up is the purveyor of amazing ribs. Dot com, the most heavily trafficked barbecue and food portal in the world. The man who needs only one name, Meathead. And Meathead will be with us the entire first hour here on the Barbecue Central Show. First up in hour two is Mike Peterson of Fat and Dumb Barbecue. Now, let me tell you, on, on September the 28th, at a KCBS contest, Mike and his team did something phenomenal. And I don't care if you are a barbecue competitor or a backyard barbecue legend. You'll want to hear this story. It is amazing. And it almost made barbecue history. It did make barbecue history, but it almost made real big barbecue history. That's Mike Peterson of Fat and Dumb Barbecue Team coming up in the first segment of the second hour. So don't you don't want to miss that one. And if you're like me and you're a charcoal fanatic, you know, always in search of the perfect burn, John Falkenberry, and that's hard to say, Falkenberry, John Falkenberry, I've been practicing it all day, of Jealous Devil Charcoal he hits third tonight with a lineup of products from Jealous Devil Charcoal. It's a little different. And while you're listening, you may want to go to the website, jealousdevil.com. They've got some, uh, some products that uh, I haven't seen. I'm sure some of you guys have seen them out there more than me. But um, they're interesting, to say the least. And um, he'll be with us. John Falkenberg will be with us in the second segment of the second hour here on the big show, the barbecue central show. I'm so glad you're watching. We appreciate it. Um, I want to start, start tonight with some breaking news out of Oklahoma. Now listen to this. David Bosca of butcher barbecue announced yesterday that he is taking his barbecue act on the road next year. And if you're in middle or East Tennessee, you'll really want to pay attention. On April the 24th and the 25th of 2020, David will be at the Butt Ranch in Mulberry, Tennessee. You can't make this stuff up. The Butt Ranch in Mulberry, Tennessee. That's just a short hop, skip, and a jump from the Jack Daniels Distillery in Lynchburg, Tennessee. He will have a competition cooking class at the Butt Ranch in Mulberry, Tennessee. David Bosca will be in Tennessee live the 24th and the 25th of April doing a competition cook class. Spaces are limited, so make sure you go to uh, butcherbarbecue.com is where you go. And David has all the details there. Um, I don't I don't remember what the price was, but all that will be on the uh, will be on the website. The prices, and I'm sure they'll have a discount for a team member or your spouse, something like that. Um, Butcher Barbecue, David Bosco will be in Tennessee. Now, David will be in Tennessee at the end of this month, defending his title of world champion from last year's Jack Daniels Invitational. The Butcher himself, David Bosco, of, of, of Barbecue Pitmasters fame, 
of runner-up at the American Royal, at the winner of the Jack Daniels Invitational, multi-multi-time grand champion, multi-multi-time reserve grand champion, the maker of butcher barbecue products that I sell at my barbecue supply store that are sold all over this country and people win with his products, he wins himself. So if you're interested in the competition class here locally, uh, not well, well in, from Chattanooga where I am in Old Wall, Chattanooga area, it's, it's an hour and 45 minutes to Mulberry. And if you think Lynchburg's small, huh, what do you get to uh, Mulberry? It is really small, but it's nice. It's nice over there. It's in the flat part of the state. You go over the mountains, you go down in the hollers, and it gets flat down there. David Bosco, that's breaking news. He just announced this yesterday. Let's go to his website, butcherbarbecue.com, if you're interested in any of those classes or the class on the 24th and 25th. And that's going to be a very exciting thing. We're so glad you're with us tonight here on the Barbecue Central Show. I'm Steve Ray, filling in for Greg Rimpy. We're going to get going here. That's still a little bit early. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. I own a uh, service station here in the Chattanooga Ultawa area. I've been here for I've uh, been there for 36 years. It's called the Midnight Oil in Ultawa. I'm the Michelin dealer here in our little town, uh, right next to my gas station. It's a, a three bay service station. We fix cars. That's what we do. I mean, it's old fashioned. Fix cars. We'll help you pump gas. We, uh, you know, oil changes, tires, brakes, all that kind of stuff. Right next door is my uh, barbecue supply store where we carry butcher barbecue products and other products. For barbecue, we try to get, um, you, you know, we try to we try to bring the people in that are backyard uh, enthusiasts, and we, we try to combine a little bit of know-how with competition with the backyard and get them comfortable using the tools that are available to all of us, you know, sauces, uh, things like disposable um, cutting boards, knives, uh, uh, food handling gloves, uh, things like that that, that uh, they may not think about using that makes it easier on them and makes it easier on us we show them how to use them and uh it's it's fun time and if you're ever in old Twa, exit 11 right off of i-75 if you're heading i-75 south get off at exit 11 go to the red light turn left if you're heading up at interstate 75 north get off at the exit go to the red light and turn right and look to your left i can throw a baseball and hit i-75 from my gas station that's how close to Midnight Oil in Ottawa. That's where I am. That's where you can find me. Where it's going to go. Let's see here. we got to do a couple little ads here. So let's do this real quick. Let's just do this. Hey, Pop Smokers.
I was checking with Meathead earlier tonight, he, he wasn't real happy that Greg wasn't going to be here. I, I'm not kidding. I was checking. John, thank you, John Soberg. I was checking the... Um, um, I was checking the uh, YouTube uh, connection. Everything's showing good to me. I don't know what's going on. Um, but it should be... It was perfect when we tested it last weekend. So if it's not on YouTube, stay on Facebook, everybody. But anyway, I was, talking, I was trying, to, trying to get hold of Meathead. And uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't happy at all that, that, um, that Greg wasn't going to be here. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. But um, let's try him again real quick. Let's see. Y'all can stay with me. We'll see if we can't grab him. Trying to connect to Skype. We may be a little bit early too, but he may. He may have said, "I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it." He's still not there. We'll give him a few more minutes until we have to call in the reserves. But um, I don't know why he would want. He would. He would not want to talk to me. I, I've talked with him before. We're we're not we're not friends, but we're acquaintances. And uh, I I met him a couple years ago down at the World Food Championships. In um, uh, that beach down in Alabama, I can't remember the name, but uh, he, he, he we seem to get along okay. I don't know if he if he thinks he's been relegated to second string or not. I hope he doesn't feel that way. Let's try him again. I know sometimes he goes out to eat before on Tuesday nights, and um, you just never know about these guys. You just never know. No, he's still not there. Still not there. Nine, nine. Let's see. It should be meathead time. I think Greg maybe calls him a few minutes later, but I wanted to get him on early because I've got I've got some things I want to talk to him about. You know, it's Oktoberfest, and I'm really, really wanting to talk to Meathead about brats. Uh, if, if you go on YouTube and you go on Google and you look at brats, there are a million ways that people cook bratwurst. Some people, you know, they some people stick holes in it. And it says on the package, don't stick holes in it, but some people do. Some people boil them in water. Some people boil them in beer. Some people say you got to use a dark beer. Some people say you got to use a light beer. There's all sorts of ideas out there. But um, Meathead assured me that he had a, um, a recipe that we would really like. And um, I'm counting on him to share that with us. I know sometimes he'll go to a movie and go out to eat. You know, he might be a little bit late, you know, but he might. He might just, he just might not be with us tonight. If he's not with us, we're going to have to do something else. But um, we'll just see. We'll just see how this goes for a minute. You're watching the Barbecue Central Show. I'm Steve Ray filling in for Greg Rempe, who is off on assignment this week. And But Greg will be back with us next Tuesday. Everybody just hang in there. <laughs> Let's see here. Craig D. Gold says, I am here. All right. Let's see then. We just checked this thing the other way. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if we can find him down here. Hang on. Hang on, Meathead. I'm looking for you. I'm looking for you. That's the right one. Nothing yet. Hang on. I'm going to go hide behind the screen a minute. We're going to get this worked out. Until then, enjoy the music. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. Meathead, I don't, I don't seem to be able to raise you. So why don't you call me? I know you're, I know you're there waiting on me. Call me and I will answer the Skype. It's Steve.Ray43 on Skype. Put that in there. Steve.Ray43. And you can call me and we'll see if um, that works backwards. Because I don't know why. Because we just, we just spoke. We just spoke yesterday on this line right here. You know, it's... <laughs> I swear to God, it never fails. You, you practice and you practice and you practice. And then you get set for the big game and you're like the dead gum Tennessee Titans. You can't do anything right. So we'll uh, see if uh, Meathead can give us a ring. Steve.Ray43. Mr. Meathead, if you can give us a ring in here, maybe we'll. Maybe we'll get you. Let's go to John Solberg. John seems to be online. Hello, John. Steve, what's going on in Ottawa, Tennessee tonight, well, my friend? So my Skype is working. Okay. All right. I guess you can see me. Is that correct? Uh, well, I'm just calling in. Let me get my camera up and running. But uh, <laughs> I'm just, you know, we're winging it, Steve. Well, we, we are winging it because I'm, I'm afraid... I am afraid I've done something wrong trying to call Mr. Meathead, and I'm already on thin ice with this guy. I know, and um, I'm really worried. And um, and uh, well, he was. I just thought I'd call in to fill air while you tried to call Meathead. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to call you when you're on the line, though. <clears throat> well, I could bail off the line and let you fill the air, but in the meantime, I could chat. <laughs> He's there. He's there. He says he's waiting for me to Skype him. And uh, Meathead, Meathead says he's dialing. Let me dump you, and we'll try to find Meathead, okay? We'll find All him. All right, I'll be, I'll be standing by if you need All me. All right, man, we'll find him. We'll find him. We'll find him. We'll find him. Let's see here. Let's go back. <laughs> this is great. This is going to be all time. This will be the last time you ever see me on this show, probably. Let's see here. There's, let's go. Let's see there we go. Let's see. We're trying to get a hold. It says connecting. This is just crazy. I know he's there. I know he's there. I know he's there. I just know it. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do something different. Don't, don't think that I'm not prepared for this. Don't you think I'm not prepared for this? Okay, hang on just a second. <clears throat> Just think, just hold on here. There's, there's more than one way to skin a cat. We'll just do this. We'll just do this. We'll do it the old fashioned way, like Thomas Edison did it. We'll just try this. On just a second. We'll just try it this way. Hello, Steve. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Meathead, how are you, sir? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I, you know, I just want, and I appreciate you hanging in there with me because I know you That's weren't. That's right. I'm getting a chuckle out of it. You, yeah, I, I guess my just desserts. You know, we practiced this yesterday, didn't we? Yes, we did. And did it work just wonderfully? Yes, it did. So I, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what. All happens. right, what the hell is that? I got another call or something? I don't know. It's probably probably this guy. Oh, that's that's you again. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I'm hearing my own voice coming through on the radio. Let's turn that. There you go. Just turn that off. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to 130 years of combined experience in, in life right now, and about in about in about 15 months of combined experience. Well, I mean, you know, look at Rempy runs in all kinds of technical problems, so it's just fair that you've got it too. Well, hey, you know, you know, 
what I wanted. First of all, I, I appreciate you hanging with me, Meathead, because I know um, I know you weren't thrilled about being interviewed by the second stream. No, that's not true at all. <laughs> now you blew my. We we we. Well, I told you what we were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you blew it on me. When you when you called me, I was supposed to go. Who the hell are you? And <laughs> hang up and run. Well, <laughs> what would you do with Greg Rempe? We were going to have a little game. And then you said you started in on this. He's not thrilled to talk to me. I'm happy to talk to you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just going wrong. Did you know that when you read the commercial, the music was so loud nobody could hear the commercial? That's a so Rempe's going to owe somebody a refund. Well, that's that's Big Papa, so uh, he can afford it. Oh, it's Big Papa? Yeah, I'll cover, I'll cover him on the backside. Oh, jeez, you don't want to incur the wrath of no, Big I, Papa. I know. I'll, I'll probably get a letter. From an attorney tomorrow. A letter, yeah, exactly. <laughs> from an attorney. <laughs> hey, Meade, let me let me let me let me just let me start with some um, pomp and circumstance here. You know, when when Paul McCarthy wakes up and gets out of bed and he runs a comb across his head, he looks in the mirror and he says, "I wrote Let It Be" and yesterday. And when Don Henley wakes up in the Hotel California, because you know he can't leave. He looks in the mirror and he says, I was in the band whose greatest hits album sold more copies than any other album in the history of the universe. When you wake up and you look in the mirror, Meathead, and you, you look deep into your own eyes and realize what you have done for the barbecue industry, how, does, how do you feel about that? And I'm serious. When I you, say, geez, that's a lot of, that hairline is receding in a hurry. <laughs> but, but don't Holy you feel, cow. don't you I feel proud? Ball cap on. <laughs> don't you feel Holy proud? Holy cow. I got a lot of work to do today. <laughs> I, I don't see it that way. I'm having fun. I'm having fun, and it's a challenge every day. I mean, I have been doing deep, deep, deep dive on sous vide Q lately, um, just trying to get a handle on how to make great combination of sous vide and barbecue. And it's just eaten me alive. This project was supposed to be over weeks ago. And I get up in the morning and I'm thinking, okay, why the hell was that brisket so damn tough last night? Sous vide's supposed to make it tender. Maybe the temperature was too high. Maybe it wasn't in there long enough. Maybe it was in there too long. So, you know, I'm just, honest to God, I'm, I'm, I'm not full of myself by any means. <laughs> I promise you. Well, what, is, tell me, what, are you, what are you trying to sous vide? I mean, Tim, what, what, are, you, what are you working on? Because that's, that's... Well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to write um, and improve our section on sous vide. Um, we call it sous vide Q. Because mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun to start with sous vide and finish on the grill, because sous vide, it, the, the, the food comes out of the bag, it's just butt ugly, but it's really tender, mm -hmm. and you can, and, and it's all about texture, um, you know, you lose a lot of moisture in the sous vide bag, a lot of people think it's really moist, um, you lose, uh, you, there, there's a big flavor shift too, um, uh, uh, redneck sous vide or reverse sear is actually more flavorful than, than regular sous vide. But when you come out of the bag, you have the opportunity to sear it, and you've got this wonderful texture and juiciness, and you can give it a great sear either on the grill or on the smoker or in a hot pan on a griddle or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, it's just another way of cooking, um, and that uses the grill. And I'm always interested in all kinds of techniques that use the grill. Um, and uh, I've just been trying to simplify the concepts for readers because it's really complex. Uh, I was looking at ribs the other day, and I went to like six different experts, and they all had entirely different temperatures and times. And so I'm really trying to come up with a, um, a starting place for the barbecue meat. So, I mean, mm -hmm. for steak, it's easy. For chicken, it's easy. For... Chops. It's easy. for tender meats. It's easy. 
You just pick the tent. You want a steak at a medium rare, you put it in at 130. That's medium rare, and it comes out at 130. Right. Um, it, it's no problem. Um, and uh, roughly um, uh, an hour or two per inch in thickness. And that's a good formula. That works. So I got that part down. But brisket flat in particular is just, well, it's just like a, it's a pain in the butt on the on the smoker. Uh, it's just a pain on the butt in this well, in the sous vide machine. Well, how big? So that's just how, my problem. I'm yeah. I'm struggling with it. I'll get it. Well, how it's big, just that my wife is getting a little sick of eating brisket flats that are <laughs> hard as a rock. I don't blame her. How how big of a how big is the flat that you're trying to sous vide? Well, I'm I, actually I'm taking about a ten pound flat, stripping it of all fat, mm -hmm. taking the um, um, point off, so it's just flat, and then I'm <laughs> cutting it into chunks. Because it's not like grilling or smoking. Um, the size of the cut doesn't really matter. Um, you can, you know, if you've got a big old fat pork butt, it takes a long time because it takes a long time for the heat to migrate from the outside to the center. Mm -hmm. But you can take that same pork butt and cut it into tubes, sections. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't take nearly so long, and you can still get extremely tender. So you can pretty much take a brisket flat or a pork butt big cuts and cut them down and still get really um, excellent tender if you got the temperature and time down. Um, so I'm still fighting it. So you take the brisket out, and then you put the brisket on a grill? Take it out of the bag. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've been, I've been, I've been doing like five variables per batch so one i will smoke first then rub then sous vide then grill one i will smoke first then rub then sous vide then smoke one i will will um not smoke first just rub sous vide then grill then smoke or smoke um some i will one thing i've learned smoking in advance and grilling in advance before sous vide doesn't make a big difference. It's a very minor difference. You really have to focus to tell the difference between that and one that has not been. So I don't think that's a necessity, and it just adds more complexity. Rubbing in advance doesn't make a big difference. It just comes, it washes off into the, um, into the purge in the bag, and uh, that doesn't make a huge difference either. Um, Oil in the bag doesn't make a huge difference. I mean, they make minor differences. So basically, you, you can start with bare-ass naked meat mm -hmm. and come out really good. If you've got the time and you've got the temperature, then you can follow it with your rub. Oh, oh you, excuse me. I forgot a step. Always salt in advance. Always salt in advance. Dry brine in advance. Always. Absolutely. But you, herbs and spices, they just can't penetrate. Uh, they they just can't get past the surface. They um, the molecules are too large. Same thing with marinating; um, it, it just doesn't work. Um, so when you come out of the bag, then you rub. Then you can either smoke or grill. And you know, I'm discovering that grilling is is really kind of nice, even on the barbecue meats, especially if there's a little fat on the surface because it kind of um, um, uh, chars and gets a nice flavor. So, I, but I, you know, I, I'm working on what I'm working on is I'm working on a PDF on this too. Um, it just got so complicated. It's also going to be a chapter in my next book. But I'm up to 53 pages in a Microsoft Word PDF, uh, a Microsoft Word doc, which will eventually be a PDF. And uh, if people are interested in getting this, they just send meathead at amazingrims.com an email, and when I'm done with it, I'll send it to you. But it may be a couple of weeks. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna simplify this. I'm gonna get to the point where um, you 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 don't have to have a four foot long chart. Um, I'm gonna find us a, a starting place, and you can go from there. You can go longer or shorter, um, hotter or cooler. But if you start at this even temp, you should be good. Well, well, do you think do you think you might find that some meats are just not adaptable to sous vide like a brisket? I mean, is there a chance that you could throw your hands no, up I've and had, say... No, I've had, I've had god-awful great brisket. I've had brisket out of sous vide 
I went up to the chef steps people who create who invented the jewel, which is a great sous vide machine, and uh, I had an, a brisket up there that they sous vide that made my knees buckle. Was it left? It was over? one of the was great, it, one of the best briskets I've sous-vide? ever had in my life. He said it wasn't leftover sous vide that they just warmed up in the sous vide. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was the real deal, dude. Huh. Well, what about a? Let's see. Let's talk about maybe before we talked about brats. What about a, yeah. what, what about pork steak in a sous vide? Because I tried doing yeah, pork steak one time. They were horrible. I, it, sous vide is just another cooking method, right? Um, it, basically, you're warming it at a low temperature for a long time. It's just another form of low and slow cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, 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 one of the things that happens is a lot of liquid comes out of the meat. It's purge, and you lose. I, I have not done the test yet. I'm working on that next to see which purges more meat on a grill or meat in a sous vide bag. But it's about the same, I think. Hmm. Um, on a 16 ounce um, steak, um, about three to four ounces of liquid comes out. Um, that seems like an awful lot, but you'll get that same kind of loss on a grill. So, um, uh, but I know I haven't met the meat yet. They can't be done at sous vide. It's just trying to, it's, I, I, you know, I'm stumbling and bumbling around here trying to explain it to you, but I, I have this theoretical belief that there's a magic number for the barbecue meats. Um, I I, I agree with you. For tender meats, for tender meats, you just pick your normal temp. 130 for a steak, 160 or 155 or so for chicken, um, uh, pork, 135 to 140. You pick the, you, and it's pretty easy. You just go by the regular meat temperature guide. But the barbecue meats are different. There, there's a, there's the, the issue of the fat content and there's the issue of uh, connective tissues and, um, uh, from here on out, I'm still. I want to get to a magic number, and I think I can. It's just that I got to go through a lot of meat. Okay, hang loose. We're going to take a real quick break. You stay right where you're at. Don't go anywhere. Don't hang. Up. Don't hang <laughs> yeah, up. Right. Don't hang up anything. Don't touch a knob or anything, and I won't either. And the, okay. All right. We're gonna we're gonna battle through this ourselves. Here we go. Hang on just a second here. <laughs> This portion of the show is brought to you by Butcher Barbecue, makers of award-winning injections, marinades, rubs, and seasonings, barbecue sauce, and grilling oil. Folks are simply the best, especially that grilling oil. If you haven't tried that, go to butcherbarbecue.com and order some grilling oil. All the Butcher's barbecue products have been tested on the competition circuit as well as backyards worldwide. Be the pit master of your neighborhood and visit Butcher Barbecue. Dot com to stock up now. And remember, always trust your butcher here with Meathead on the barbecue set. Yeah, you show. you know you need to you need to kill the musical background when you're when you're when you're paying the bills. You still couldn't hear that? I heard it, but it was rough. Uh, you, when you're when you're when you're doing advertising, I think you just need to kill the musical background and don't get too fancy. Well, I'll do that. Well, Greg Greg plays it though in the background. Well, yeah. Well, certain, Greg's been certain, doing this for forty and I, years, and I'm certainly know? doing great, just like Greg does, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? Well, Every down here, and, I, and I'm sure I'm sure Chicago is. Um, hang on a minute. These my buddies are hassling me on Facebook here. Um, I'm on Facebook too, and. Dear government, I can't see more than like four comments, and I know people got to be jumping down my throat on sous vide, um, and uh, I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Under, I don't understand the. the I hate way it, Facebook. <laughs> I love it. Hey, I hate what? Microsoft products like Skype. Just I, don't get me started. I won't. <laughs> about the technical problems I've been running into all weekend with with Microsoft products. So, hey, when um. Down here, and I'm sure in Chicago, Oktoberfest, they're they're everywhere, and every everybody has them from Protestants to Catholics to Jewish people to agnostics to atheists. But everybody's got an Oktoberfest, and of course, at every Oktoberfest, there's brats. Now, me, that I want I want to get the low down skinny on how to do a brat. I've seen all sorts of things online. I've seen 
it says on the package, <laughs> don't don't puncture the brats. And then you go on YouTube, and the first thing the guy does is get a get a bamboo shoot and starts putting holes in the brats. And they say, <laughs> don't boil them and don't boil them and beer boil them in water. You know, don't well, boil first them. First of all, don't listen to anybody outside of Wisconsin. Okay, <laughs> I, I believe that. Bratwurst are the national food of the state of Wisconsin, and I'm down here in Illinois, and I make I make my junkets up there to study at the feet of the masters. I mean, that is where Johnsonville comes from. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, uh, first of all, it's just a sausage, um, and uh, all sausages have a lot in common. And when you think about it, hamburger is a sausage; it just doesn't have a skin on it. Um, uh, so it, 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 they're all ground meats and they're all uh, kindred spirits. Um, the, the number one issue to be concerned about is killing all the bugs because when you grind the meat, you distribute any contamination deep into the meat. So you got to get it up to around 155 or so to kill all the bugs. Um, now, beyond that, there's a bazillion ways to go. Um, and, and you mentioned Oktoberfest and everything, but golly, the brats are, you know, our, our tailgate food, too. Mm -hmm. And it is tailgate season. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the brat tub is uh, one of the popular techniques. Um, and the idea is you simmer them in beer. And, you know, anybody who knows me and knows my website and knows my book knows that I'm a skeptic. And I attempt to debunk and disbelieve everything that I read. But that one, it turns out, actually works. I was shocked to learn that beer, when you simmer a brat in beer, can actually penetrate um, a natural casing and get in. And um, uh, it can actually get a little bit deep into the meat, um, which surprised me. Um, generally, as I was just saying with sous vide, generally marinades and baths and stuff don't penetrate whole muscle. You can soak a two-inch steak in a marinade overnight, and you're lucky if it gets more than a sixteenth inch below the surface. Right. And if you don't believe it, do it, and then cut it open and take a core sample, and you won't taste any marinade down in there. Um, uh, so... A sixteenth to an eighth of an inch is about, and that's just because it's getting into the pores and the cracks. It's not actually getting into the muscle. Well, let me but ask it you. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me ask you this. Hold on one second. Yeah. Does water do the same thing that beer does? Does it penetrate the casing? If you put yes. water, okay. So fluid, yes. liquid fluid, does penetrate the casing? Okay. Yes, the the casings are highly porous. Okay. Um, and 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 and, and fluids can get through. Even um, fluids with large molecules like beer. Beer has flavor molecules that are fairly large, and they get in. And we tried this with dye, which has large molecules, um, and they get in. So that, that's interesting. Um, they don't make a huge impact on the flavor because the number of flavor molecules in a beer is fairly low. But, and, and the number of flavor molecules in a bratwurst is fairly high. So you're talking about a flute trying to overplay a, uh, uh, a rock and roll band like Kiss. It's pretty hard for it to get noticed, but mm -hmm. it does have an influence. If nothing else, it keeps moisture going in there. Now, as far as puncturing it is concerned, most sausages are 70% meat, 30% fat, maybe 80, 20. It depends on who's making them. But they're in the na in the neighborhood of 20 to 30 percent fat, and if you puncture them as it heats, that fat j squeezes out through the holes, and it, that th there's two problems with that. Number one, that fat is a moisturizer. Um, number two, it causes flare-ups. Uh, it drips onto the fire, and you've got flare-ups, and and flare-ups can put soot on your surface. And now you've got meat that tastes like an ashtray. So uh, you don't want to puncture um, a brat. Um, now, um, uh, the technique I like and that I kind of developed that I think is kind of fun for a brat tub is I start with a beer, and I put it in an aluminum pan mm -hmm. and a couple of beers, and you throw the brats in there, and you let them simmer for a little bit. 
and then you pull the brats out, and then you grill them. Because when you grill them, Dow, you're adding flavor of smoke, and um, that you're 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 you know um, browning the surface, and that's the Maillard reaction, which is adding flavor to the surface, um, and and you're also putting crunch to the to the casing. Uh, I like a brat or a sausage or a hot dog with a snap yeah. to the casing. Yeah, for and sure. And so you're doing that while you're grilling them, and it doesn't take long. And by the way, try this. I know it sounds goofy. We always lay the sausages across the grill um, uh, uh, perpendicular to the grates, Correct. to the gridirons. If you lay them between the gridirons, it makes stripes that go the length of the, of the sausage, which looks goofy. They look like prison stripes. Mm -hmm. But it's really easy to roll them a quarter turn because you just roll from great to great to great. You know, for, for, uh, kind of like those rolling machines at, uh, at Target where they roll the yeah. hot dogs and stuff. Um, but it's easy to roll them and get even cook, and that's that, they they look a little weird with vertical stripes rather than horizontal stripes. But I think it's a better technique. Now you gotta if you're gonna do that, you gotta take the brats, which tend to be curved, and you gotta kind of bend them a little and try to straighten them out. But meanwhile, okay, so you're grilling them, you leave the beer in the pan on the grill, and then you're gonna add onion mm -hmm. and mustard. And butter. Now it's already had the sausage in there, so it's pulled some fat and some sausage flavor out. So now what you're doing is you're making a sauce out of the beer with mustard and ketchup. And uh, yeah, I know ketchup. Uh, it sounds weird to, uh, uh, but it actually works with a blend of mustard and ketchup mm -hmm. and uh, onions and some butter. Um, and you can throw in the seasonings if you want to like thyme in there. And you, you cook this down until you get this thick glop mm -hmm. full of onions. And that is what you put on the brat on the sandwich, on the bun. So you've now got a grilled brat that's been simmered in beer that goes on the bun. And you've got this mustardy, beery, um, uh, oniony glop. And boy, it is good. It is really good. And I've talked to people who've done it, and they've said they've even tossed cheese in there. That sounds like it could work too. It does sound like it. What about um, what? How do you when, when people buy sauerkraut? And I, I know I just don't do brats a lot. What is what is sauerkraut number one? And how do you? Is it something you just buy and heat it up? I mean, well, you, you don't um, have to. You don't have to make it from scratch, do you? No, no, sauerkraut is pretty easy to make from scratch. Um, well, I take that back. I've, I, I have failed at making sauerkraut several times. It's, it's fermented cabbage. It's similar to kimchi. It's cabbage that um, um, you, you, you add salt to, and it ferments, and it gets crunchy um, and crisp uh, and has a unique flavor, which I like an awful lot. Um, and it's a way of preserving the fall harvest for winter. Um, uh, it, it, you know, salting things, pickling things, is pickling ca uh, cucumbers, pickling carrots, all was, originated as a way of preserving the fall harvest for winter before refrigeration came along. Mm -hmm. So sauerkraut was just a way to preserve cabbage. Uh, and it, 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 it's, it's salty and crunchy and it's, I think it's delicious cold. Um, it's really good on, um, things like, uh, Reuben sandwiches, mm -hmm. but a lot of people put them on hot dogs. In fact, in New York, it's de rigueur for a hot dog. It's required on a hot dog in New York. Um, and they're good on brats. The, um, they, they can be just glopped on there cold. Or hot. Now, there, you, you can buy sauerkraut in two forms in the store. You can get it off the shelf at room temperature in a jar, which is canned and shelf-stable, and you can keep it in your pantry for months. But the better version 
is the stuff that comes out of the refrigerator case. Okay, that's in um, the bag. And it, that has not been, the stuff in the jar has been heated to pasteurize it. Um, and it, it is kind of softer, it doesn't have the crunch, it doesn't have the brightness. Um, and the stuff in the refrigerator case, you can buy it in jars, but lately a lot of it comes in plastic bags. And you just take it home and cut open the bag and dump it into a jar, but you have to keep it in the fridge. And I've kept jars of sauerkraut, like a quart of sauerkraut in the fridge for months. No problem. Doesn't lose any freshness. It's really great for months. I love this stuff. It sounds like you don't know much about it. You've got to try this stuff. It, I don't. I don't. It's fun. Down here, down here at these, at these Oktoberfests, um, and, the, and the reason I'm asking is we're, we're going to sell brats at an event coming up in, in a, in mm -hmm. a, with, a, with a charity ra fundraiser thing. And and um and the lot and down here they put everybody uses sauerkraut. Now I'm not mm -hmm. a, I'm not a sauerkraut fan. I don't like it. But I but we well you can get just it. serve it cold right out of the jar, mm -hmm. and I love it. Or you can warm it. And you can throw it on a griddle so it heats up and yeah. maybe even browns a little around the edges. You can throw it on a griddle with some butter. Um, I frankly think it's absolutely at its best right out of the refrigerator case. No fuss, no muss, cold. But uh, people do all sorts of fun stuff with it, and uh, I mean, you know, it's it's of Central and Eastern European descent. Um, these are the cabbage eaters uh, in Central and Eastern Europe. Well, the I see I see some people throw those brats in a big pile of um, sauerkraut, and they, uh -huh. heat, they heat them up like that, and they they pull it all out together. And I, I guess there's I guess what you're saying there's really no wrong way to do them; it's just a better way. Well, I mean, taste is a matter of taste. Um, one man's trash is another man's treasure, as they say. Well, that's uh, that's uh, that's some good advice you've given us on the broadcast. I'm looking at the uh, Facebook uh, page, mm -hmm. and uh, there's an interesting thought. Um, Tim, all right, I got to put my glasses on. Um, uh, Tim Hausler. Hausler. That's a German name I ever saw. Mm -hmm. it. it says, "Don't forget horseradish on your brats." Now, that's an interesting concept. I'm a horse. We grow horseradish. Um, horseradish is a fun thing. In fact, Illinois is the world's leading producer of horseradish, and it's it's a root vegetable, um, and just one gnarly, ugly looking thing. It's not at all like a carrot. When you pull it up, it's all misshapen and uh, full of dirt. You got to wash it off, scrub it down, and you peel it, and then you grate it, and it's got that horseradish flavor, but it's not real strong. And what you do is you grate it, and then you put it in a jar with some white distilled vinegar. Nothing fancy. You don't need balsamic or um, cider vinegar. And a couple of pinches of salt and let it sit overnight. Then you open it up and take just a little tiny taste, and it will blow the roof of your head off. It is amazing when it's fresh like that, and it's fantastic. That's just the same way they do it for commercial horseradish sauce. Sometimes they throw sour cream in there. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, fresh horseradish is good on brats. Uh, thank you, Tim, for reminding me. And what about, um, do people put cold, put people put coleslaw on brats too, don't they? Yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, I, I've um, seen it on hot particularly dogs. Particularly you get down into the Carolinas and hot dogs are always served with, um, Carolinas and Georgia mm -hmm. often, not always, but often served with, uh, with slaw on top. Um, and now you get into the argument. Creamy or sweet sour? Creamy. Um, uh, creamy. But uh, typically it's creamy down there. And, yeah, they go on all kinds of sausages. That's pretty standard down that neck of the woods. And in many places you put chili and um, horseradish. I mean, not, not horseradish. That's a coleslaw on top. On the brats. Uh, on the brat or the hot dog. It's big on hot dogs. Well, we're gonna we're gonna be doing brats. We're gonna do about four hundred of them. Now, oh this, my! Now this is now this was this is my my thinking on this, and and you can steer me, and anybody in the chat can steer me. Just don't make fun of me because I don't know how to do brats. Because I've said <laughs> and I've told everybody no, you're, I'm you're, not you're a cook. You're doing great, except for your uh, uh, <laughs> no. the uh, the Skype thing. <laughs> okay, we, we, we've moved we've moved past that. Okay, the, uh, I'm, I've told everybody I'm not a chef. I'm not a cook. I can cook barbecue. I can cook four things, 
and, and that's what I can cook. So what we were going to do is I'm going to get those big full pans. Uh, a, big, a full pan will hold 25 Johnsonville brats, okay, uncooked Johnsonville brats. I was going to fill them up with water and then put some onions in there and then seal them up real good, put them on my 48-inch Myron Mixon water smoker, and simmer all of them. Twelve will fit on there. So I can get 300 brats in there and let that smoker simmer, use it as an oven, and simmer the brats in the uh, water and onion. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take them out and finish them on the grill. Okay? And then I want to take, I want to do exactly what you said with the, with the, what, with the fluid left over. I want to add more stuff to it and reduce those onions down and put some more, some peppers in there and reduce that all down to get that glob that you're talking about. I think I'd have uh, a Sounds creative. Uh, could work very well. Um, you do understand, of course, that they're going to be confined in that bag and they're not going to get any smoke. Um, uh, but you're going to get that grill flavor when you take right. them out. Yeah, right. Uh, so just... you're basically braising them, um, which could work very nicely, um, especially if there's some beer in there. Uh, I do know my technique works. You know, it's the same thing with competition barbecue or when you got company coming over. Um, don't do it for the first time at the festival. Right. Practice it at home. Um, test it, practice it, make sure you and your family love it, and then take it. Don't, don't, don't show up at the festival with something new. Right, because that could be a disaster. You bet. And I've, I've dealt with disaster before. I've, I've, I've done that at festivals. Yep. It's just like this Skype experiment I've been doing. <laughs> you, know, I watched, you know, I watched a um, a video by uh, uh, Dr. Barbecue from a long time ago. Meathead, and he was using the exact same method that that you're using. You know, put them in the beer first, and then he reduced those onions in that in that pan, and uh, and that that mash. I don't know what you call it, but um, man, it looks like it's really really good. Yeah, and I believe well, that. I, I, I believe know, that I'm a huge fan of Doctor Barbecue, and he's a really creative cook. But if he did that, he stole my recipe. He might have. He might have. <laughs> and he won't. And, give, and with he won't my give, good he wishes and good. best blessings, <laughs> he's going he's gonna to be here in um my in our little community in a couple of weeks at the uh, scenic city. Uh, he Big gets around. Festival. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a good guy. Well, Meathead, thank Great you so guy. much. Uh, I really, I really appreciate you hanging in there with me, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I know I'm not Greg, and uh, <laughs> and that's quite evident. I'm glad we it, pulled it off. It's quite, yeah, we pulled it off. We kept, we hung in there. We hung we, in we, there. We, we, good, good thinking on your feet. And when Greg, when Greg calls me tomorrow to ball me out, I'm going to tell him we hung in there. We didn't quit. No, Greg <laughs> calls tomorrow. I'm going to say, man, it went great, just as well as it ever, ever did. Exactly right. Meathead, thank you so much. All right, take care. Have a good show. You too. Appreciate you. Meathead Goldwyn, direct from Chicago, Jeff, is what part of Illinois that uh, Meathead is from. All right, we're going to take a real quick break here. I'm going to get something to drink. Everybody do the same thing, and we'll be right back with these words from our sponsors. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show with Steve Ray filling in for Greg Rempe. We'll be right back. 